Dear students, a warm welcome to e Shikshana program. As we have seen about the module 4, Attractor Neural Network of the subject Artificial Neural Network. So in this class, we are going to continue with the previous topic. So today's topic is going to be a stochastic learning of visible states in Boltzmann machine. Let me see about the topic. So before entering into the topic, just I want to give you a, a recap about the previous video. <coughs> we have come across about a brain state in a box neural network and simulated annealing. In that we have discussed about the critical aspects. We have taken the critical aspects value C between 0.8 and 0.9. And we have entered into a topic called Boltzmann mission. We have come across about a learning algorithm of Boltzmann mission, computational issues two issues we have come across over there and we have taken the half fill network in the discrete with which is going to be dealt with the Boltzmann machine and as well as we have seen about the half fill word uh, half fill network versus Boltzmann machine too and we have entered into the architecture of Boltzmann machine and operational details we have come across. So in this class we are going to continue the topic of Boltzmann machine with stochastic learning of visible state in Boltzmann mission. In the network, we consider the configuration of the visible units, those which corresponds to features and classic information, which is going to be denoted by alpha, which is going to be denoted by and later alpha. And the configuration corresponding to the hidden unit, which is going to be denoted by a beta value that is going to be a beta value. Okay. So, as we are going to aware about that, those which corresponds to features and the class informations, we are going to take that one. Hence, the configuration visible terms are going to be denoted as alpha and beta. Understand? So, uh, we now uh, give our attention to the problem where we are given a set of uh, desired probabilities for all the visible units which we are going to denote it by a letter Q of alpha. We want the network to learn those probabilities in such a way that the actual probabilities of P of alpha that the results from the random simulation matches these probabilities for a given time set T. So, that is going to be taken into consideration. So, the desired prob probabilities of Q of alpha are assumed to be derived from the timing patterns in T represented by the letter T. So, as we are aware about that the patterns are assumed to be contained both features and possible class informations depending upon the application which is going to be get change. So, the actual probability P of alpha describes the state of network in which uh, uh, what is going to be called the free running state where the network is going to be annealed with no signal are going to be get clamped. Such a way we are going to do that one. So, as we are aware about that the actual probability P of alpha describes the state of a network in which the state is going to be called as a free running state where the network is going to be get annealed with no signal are going to be get clamped over the. Okay. So, in the derivation of this Boltzmann learning rule, we will make use of the fact that the probability of a visible configurations alpha is the sum of joint probability over all the possible hidden configurations beta. Okay. Hence, we are going to derive an expression for that. So, that the probability is going to be get dealt as like that. So, finding a set of weights such that any given temperature, the actual distribution P of alpha matches the desired distribution Q of alpha as closely as possible. And we are going to understand about this P of alpha is nothing but summation of beta to 0, where probability of alpha comma beta that is going to be delay summation of e to the power of minus summation of alpha beta by t by the Boltzmann constant that is going to be taken into consideration. 
So, let me discuss about the same where this uh, exponential data the energy of this alpha beta is the energy of the network in the configuration which is going to be defined by the visual and hidden neurons. So, here the z is nothing but the partition function and the p of alpha beta the Boltzmann probability of alpha beta is the probability that the system which find itself in some global configurations of alpha and beta. So, this equation states that in order to find the probability of a given visible state. So, we sum overall possible hidden states. So, keeping the visible configuration fixed, we want to match, we want to match the probability distribution p of alpha and q of alpha. So, this match will be achieved by adjusting the weights of the network which is going to be using in the gradient descent on an error function and measures the difference between the actual and the desired probability distributions. So, this error function is going to be relatively entropy which is referred as cull back labeler, labeler distance. So, which is going to be uh, renamed or which is going to be called as cull back labeler divergency. So, that value which are going to be dealt as d of q alpha comma p alpha is equal to summation of q alpha q of alpha logarithm q of alpha by p of alpha. So, note that the d is always positive and goes to 0 if one if and only if p of q is equal to q of q for all the alpha values. Okay. So, always d is equal to a positive value always it is going to be a positive value and goes to 0 at the condition when it goes to 0 it tends to 0 at when it is going to be at p of alpha is equal to q of alpha during that time only it is going to be going to 0 for all alpha is equal to value for all alphas. Okay. So, this uh, addition it is a, a convex actually uh, which means it is a global minimum which shows that it is going to be a convex and which is going to be showing a minimum. Okay. <clears throat> so, note that the error function which is going to be defined by the cullback labelier divergence depends on only the visible configuration and not on the hidden neuron configurations. We must understand about that this error function which is going to be depends on only the visible configuration not on the hidden neuron configurations. So, learning <coughs> in the Boltzmann machine employs a gradient descent of d and as mentioned we are going to have a set of t of timing patterns, training patterns are going to be defined as in the q of alpha. Okay. So, let me see about the learning objectives which is going to be there in the Boltzmann machine. So, the basic objective of a learning is find a set of weights which is going to be finding a set of weights such that at any given temperature, at any given temperature we are going to find the set of weights at any given temperature. So, as the actual distribution p of alpha matches the desired distribution q of alpha as a temperature or as closely as possible to the temperature. In order to achieve, in order to achieve this objective, the weight update in the Boltzmann machine is going to be get defined by a standard gradient descent. Okay. As we are going to see about that, we are going to have the standard gradient descent is going to be given over here. Okay. So, see that the actual distribution p of alpha matches the desired distribution q of alpha as closely as possible. So, that in order to achieve this, we are going to make the objective to be get updated with the weights in the Boltzmann machine and that is going to be defined by the 
standard gradient descent. Okay. In taking this partial uh, derivation, note that since alpha, the Q of alpha does not depend on the network weight, so that the del of Q of alpha by del of W i j is equal to 0. Hence, we are going to make that del of W i j is equal to, we are going to get the expression, this is going to deal with the particular value which is going to be summation of Q alpha by P alpha into del P alpha by del of W i j, weight matrix is going to be considered over here. Okay. So, here this value the learning uh, rate is going to be taken into the consideration. Okay, now. So, this uh, learning rate is going to be considered along with this, so that we are going to get the update of the weight matrix in order to achieve this particular objective, that is going to be the main important thing. Okay. So, the weight update in the Bol uh, Boltzmann machine, which is going to be get uh, defined by the standard gradient descent by assuming that the value of del Q of alpha by del W weight i j is equal to 0, we are going to consider this expression as del of W i j is equal to the summation data we are going to get it over there, which is going to have the value of Q of alpha by P of alpha into del P of alpha by del the weight matrix is going to be get considered over there. Let me see how this is going to be get dealt in detail, how we are going to make that one. So, now we are going to see about the equation which is going to complete the evaluation of this equation. So, we now make use of this equation, we are going to complete the evaluation, ev evaluation of the equation, how we are going to simplify this equation over here. Just we are going to take this value which is going to be taken in the previous equation that the above equation, the del of P of alpha by del of the weight matrix is going to be defined because we are going to exp expand this terminology as already we have been given over there. From that we are going to get that, we are going to assume some of the values over there that the P of the P of alpha and beta the probability data which have been taken as P of alpha and beta is going to be assumed equal to that of exponential of the energy minus of energy which have been made over there by T. That value is going to be taken over there. In this consideration, we are going to look into that one. Such a way, we are going to make that one. And we are going to take the summation of this particular EGN vectors as well as EGN values over there. So, which is going to be expected the value of the product of signal. So, signal function is going to be considered. So, that we are going to consider the signal function and we are going to take S i and S j. Then this equation is going to be get simplified as this particular 1 over t summation of signal of alpha beta and the signal of alpha beta signal function of E g n value and signal function of E g n vector value and the probability of alpha beta is going to be considered over there. Such a way we are going to get this expression. Here, if you are going to see about this S i of alpha and beta is a signal of neuron which is going to be there in the ith configuration and which is going to be configuration specified jointly by the alpha and beta value. As like that one, we are going to see about that S j of alpha beta, which is going to be taken in the signal of neuron j on the configuration specified jointly by the value of alpha and beta. And substituting this equation and working through the algebraic, which is going to yield the final weight update expression. So, okay. so the final update expression is going to be get dealt as like this. So, this is going to be the final expression what we are going to get over here. So, this is going to be the clamped value and the free value which is going to be get present in the term of sign function, signal function, where we have defined this particular value which is going to be defined over here. So, this equation, the energy which is going to be clamped in the signal function of the ith neuron and the jth neuron of this configuration. We are going to take the summation of alpha to beta 
and which is going to give the value of the particular q of alpha q uh, probability of beta bar alpha and the signal functions both signal functions are going to be taken over there in the ith and jth neuron. So, this equation which is going to uh, defines actually this is going to defines the correlation of the signal s i and s j. So, the signal correlation is going to be get identified over here. So, when the visible units are going to be clamped of fixed value in the visible configurations uh, averaged in accordance with the probabilities of the training patterns of q of alpha. So, note that uh, when the signal which is going to be get clamped is going to be equal to that of free, the clamped signal is going to be equal to that of free, then the del of weight matrix is equal to 0 okay, and the network weights are to be said to have converged to the desired values. So, as we are going to aware about that which are going to be taken into two things, one is going to be called as a learning component, one more is be called as unlearning component. The learning component and unlearning component both are going to be get free, it is going to be get available over there. The signal of the energy of the signal function clamped minus the energy of the signal function free is going to be considered. So, during that time we are going to get the weight matrix. Assume when the clamped signal as well as when the clamped signal is equal to the free signal. So, energy of the signal function clamped is equal to the energy function of the signal free, then what happened? The particular weight matrix is going to become 0. Understand? This is what the weight update expression. Finally, we are going to get the weight update expression as the weight update expression for this is equal to 1 over t by the learning component clamped 1 and unlearning component free. So, it is going to be get subtracted over there. So, during that time what is the value is going to be there that is going to be called as the weight matrix where weight matrix update which is going to be get updated in the particular neuron. Moving on to the next topic which is going to be called as MATLAB code for Boltzmann learning. As we are already aware about that we are going to do the MATLAB uh, simulation for the particular thing. So, the code which is going to be given over here provides the main loop of the MATLAB code to implement this Boltzmann learning algorithm. Okay. Let me see about this Boltzmann learning algorithm which is going to initialize the data. Obviously, we are going to aware about the which is going to initialize the data over there. Okay. We are going to take that k is equal to 1 to 1 is to 10 and we are going to take the random state is going to be clock is going to be fixed over there and the free signals are going to be taken into consideration and the clamped H signals which is going to be get highlighted over there. So, initialization is going to be made over there. So, this is a clamped signal which is going to be given over there. As, as, as like that we are going to do the process over here and we are going to enter into the particular thing. So, if you are going to see about the end we are going to have a collect state change weights also going to be get fixed over there. So, this is a separate one which is going to be given over there for the collect states and the change weights. What are the update weights are going to be there? The expression what we have been taken over there those expressions we are going to be present over here. So, what are the expression we come across in the previous those things are going to be get incorporated this one. This is nothing but the uh, program MATLAB program for the simulation. Here we assume that all the variables and the network have been initialized. So, we implement this Boltzmann learning algorithm with the Boltzmann machine with a binary signal and stochastic signal update in accordance with the equation as we are already aware about that is not it. So, we are going to do that one with the Boltzmann machine with a binary signal and stochastic signal update in accordance with the equation which have been already we have come across over there the equations that is going to be considered over there. So, if you are going to see that the clamped signals which are going to be get taken into this consideration over here. So, from this we are going to have the clamped signals are going to be get take, uh, considered and we are going to do the process in a we are going to do the simulation process. Okay. 
So, let me see about the simulation how it is going to be, what is the simulation is going to be present over there. As you are aware about that, our simulation is for an extremely a simple network which is going to comprising a two uh, what I can say two visibles and one hidden neuron. So, that the uh, we can actually track what is going on over there. Okay? So, this simulation which is going to show a result over there which is going to be nothing but a snapshot of the probability of the profile of 16 configurations and 1 to 10 weight updates we have been shown over there. Okay? So, 1 to 10 weights are going to be get updated initial probability and the final probability we are going to calculate from this one. So, our simulation as I said it is nothing but an extremely a yeah, simple network which comprises of two values of visible data and one hidden neuron. So, that we can actually track the weights or what is going to be happening over there. However, the code can be used directly for more complex networks. So, straight away whichever the code we have been seen over there, na, this codes can be directly we can use for more complex networks, but the neuron uh, the, if, if the neurons are going to be assumed to, to have a biases and no self connections are going to be get allowed over there. Such a way time only we can use the code directly over there. So, in order to uh, facilitate the collection of uh, correlation statistics, we perform annealing which is going to be from the uh, random number which are going to be get initialized over there. So, as we are aware about that I am going to take the random number which is going to be initialized over there, random number is going to be present over there, we are going to take the random number and this random number is going to be taken into consideration of 600 iterations we are going to specify in this particular process, 600 iterations. Okay. So, uh, uh, the random number which is going to be taken into 600 initial points in parallel. So, for this the free running signals are going to be stored in the matrix free signals. Okay? So, the minus 1 signal appended in the last column or uh, for the BIOS neurons. Okay? So, the signal minus 1 is going to be appended for the BIOS neurons and the negative sign which was assumed for an activation equation already we have come across about activation equation and signal equation. Here, this minus signal is going to be assumed for the activation equation of the form x i is equal to summation of uh, w uh, i j the weight matrix into the signal matrix. Okay? So, under a clamped condition we are going to assume that values. So, the signal of the visible units are said to be a data vector and the hidden signals are going to be randomized and stored within the BIOS, within the BIOS signal. So, that in the clamped H signal vector as you are going to aware about that the clamped H signal vector, we are going to take the clamped H signal vector over here and we already have initialized that clamped H signal value and that is going to be dealt into the value H signal value is going to be signal clamped signal is going to be taken over there and the clamped signals are going to be considered and annealing of each of the 600 points will be performed. Okay? As already I said about that we are going to have a 600 points will be performed from a temperature of 10 to 1 which is going to draw from 10 to 1 that is why initially we are going to take that k is equal to 1 is to 10. So, which is going to be taken into 10 to 1 it is going to be drawn, it is going to be get decreased from 10 to 1, the temperature is going to be decreased from 10 to 1, that is going to be an annealing process. And assuming the uh, what I can say, the, assuming the value of a contraction is going to be taken into t to t, t, t by k is equal to 0.99, we are going to consider the value of 0.99 of this k, t k value that is going to be considered over there. Okay? So, computing this signal by using computing those signals under the free running conditions is going to be very easy. So, here the neurons are going to be applied randomly in each cycle 
for the each cycle we first compute the activation of f of x for all neurons. Okay. So, then the probability that the signal takes to the one state is going to be stored in the matrix of the particular probability of function. Then for each instance of a signal vector there are 600 of them okay, underline that kindly remember that there are 600 points we have been considered over there. So, that the probability for the selected neurons uh, j is going to be compared with the random number which is going to be generated and if the random number is going to be less than the probability then the signal is going to be updated to 1 else it is going to be updated to minus 1. Okay. So, when it is going to be get satisfies the value is going to be 1 or else the value is going to be minus 1 that is going to be taken care. Okay. For each of this instance of the signal vector of all the 600 points, the probability for the selected neuron which is going to be compared with the jth neuron and with the random number is going to be get generated. If the random number is going to be lesser than that of the probability that the signal is going to be updated to plus 1 or else it is going to be updated to minus 1. Such a way we are going to do the process. So, for all uh, the clamped 600 points, so what I can say the, the clamped cases of 600 instance of signal vectors are stored in the clamped signal by repeating the data point as repeating number by q times where q is the number of patterns uh, patents already we have discussed over there such patterns are going to be considered over here. So, this is going to be to ensure that the visible signals are going to be clamped to values given in the pattern set and also to ensure that the patterns appear will be equally frequent. Okay. So, that in the program if you can see about that the clamped signals are going to be get made over there as the signal satisfies is going to be get 1 if signal is not stat satisfies and that is going to be get minus 1 and the clamped signals the clamped signals are going to be get present over here. So, for all the 600 instance of the signal vector which are going to be get stored in this signal and repeating the data point which is going to be the number which is going to be updating with the repeated number by q times. Okay. So, this is going to be to ensure that the visible signals are going to be clamped to the values given in the pattern set and also to ensure that the pattern appears will be equally frequent, equal frequent. So, the hidden and bias neuron signal vectors in the patterns appear will equally frequent and this vectors are going to be clamped H signals are then appended to the complete the matrix appended to complete the matrix. Okay. So, the rest of the procedure which is going to be same as already we have been discussed over there for the free signal case also for the free signal also it is going to be doing the same process. Finally, the hidden signal vector is going to be copied back for use in the next iteration. Then this update procedure is going to be repeated for number of cycles may be 300 in the present example or it may be more than that of the previous examples. Okay. So, after the system is going to be annulled, after the system is going to be get annulled, the clamped signals are first restored into the matrix clamped signals and the correlation uh, matrix which is going to be uh, expression for a C or expression for F for the clamped and free running case which is nothing but expression for clamped and expression for free. For the clamped and free running case respectively are going to be get calculated over there. So, the weight changes are going to be affected. So, once it is going to be simulate the weight changes are going to be get affected. So, this clamped and free running correlation matrix are going to be get used to make the weight changes. So, yeah, learning rate of 0 0.02 is going to be taken over there, 0 0.02 was used for this simulation. So, this simulation program was run with a single pattern of 1, minus 1. 
this is going to be used for 100 learning iterations, which is going to be used for 100 learning iterations that is going to be used for the 100 learning iteration. So, the figure which I have been shown over there is going to be giving the glimpse about the particular data. So, note that since there are 3 neurons as I said two of them are going to be an uh, visible vectors and one is going to be hidden neuron. So, 3 neurons are going to be there, there are 8 possibilities 2 to the power of 3 is going to be 8 possibilities. So, 8 possible states we are going to come across over there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 possible states are going to get present over there. These are assumed to be a numbered from 0 to 7, which is going to be taken from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 states have been mentioned over there. So, assuming that the binary representation of this uh, 8 bipolar states are going to be present from represented by from 0 to 7. Uh, note that uh, since we wish the state of 1 comma minus 1 state of 1 comma minus 1 to appear with increasing probability on uh, on the probability of 2 states which is going to increasing a yeah, learning which proceeds which can be changed as 1 comma minus 1 comma minus 1 and it can be changed or it can be changed into 1 comma minus 1 comma plus 1 ok. So, this probabilities of the remaining 6 states should decrease. So, that this probabilities are going to be calculated from the Boltzmann distribution as we have come across over there the 6 the 8 states are going to be there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So, 8 states have been mentioned over there. So, here if you are going to see about that at the value of 2 we are going to get the initial probability at the value of 5 in between we are going to get the final probabilities. So, the values which are going to be taken over there as 1 minus 1 minus 1 or 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 and plus 1. So, this probabilities are going to be get calculated from the Boltzmann distribution. Let us see about the simulation results for the Boltzmann machine experiment. So, as we have come across over there, the 8 states are going to be present over there as, as I said to you people as how we are going to identify an initial and final probability. If you are going to see about these iterations, it is going to be there. So, to get the clarity about this iteration, we are going to take this table. This table is going to be explained in a detailed manner about the iteration of this particular states. So, this table shows the result of iteration which is going to be start from 81 to 100 almost 20 iterations are going to get present over there. Notice that the probabilities of the states are going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 states are going to be there 8 states. Whereas, the state 0 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, okay. 0 to 3 and 6 and 7 are going to be decreasing in value. If you are going to see about that the value 0 0.1893 and 93, 93898681. So, it is going to be decreasing in order this also going to decrease, this also going to be decrease, this also going to be get decrease 0, 1, 2, 3 and 6 also going to be see that observe this is going to be decreasing in order. So, 0 0.712, 0 0.712 then 0 0.711, 0 0.0710, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 it is going to be decreasing over there. Whereas, if you are going to see about the iteration state 4 and 5 the iteration state 4 and 5. If you can see about these two iteration states 4 and 5 are increasing as expected. See that it is going to be starting with 1 to 0 0.1312 and this is 0 0.13213141516070891 0 0.13, So, this is going to be increasing as well the state 5 also going to be get increasing. You can assume that you can see that 
जीरो पॉइंट वन फोर थ्री सिक्स फोर थ्री फाइव जीरो फाइव एट सिक्स फाइव सेवन थ्री एट जीरो एट एट लाइक दिस गोइंग बी इंक्रीजिंग ओवर दियर सो द स्टेट वाइज प्रॉबिलिटीज विच आर गोइंग टू बी सीन फ्रॉम दिस पार्टिकुलर फिगर विच द प्रॉबिलिटी फ्रॉम द इनिशियल इट्रेशन एंड द इट्रेशन ऑफ हंड्रेड आर ग्राफिकली कंपेर्ड इन द सिमुलेशन फिगर सो एस वी आर अवेयर अबाउट दिस दिस फिगर विच शोज द वैल्यू ओवर य so here the iteration value as we are aware about that the state 0 to 3 and the state 5 and 6 are going to be get decreasing over here whereas 4 and 5 are going to be get increasing this 4 and 5 are going to be get increasing so if you are going to see about this is decreasing again this is decreasing this is decreasing and here we can see the increase this is going to be the see 4 and 5 data are going to be get increasing over here in the pattern that is what we are going to analyze about that one so the state wise probabilities from the initial iteration and the iteration of 100th iteration are graphically compared in the simulation figure so now carefully note that the way the probability of occurrence of the state 4 and 5 have taken a jump while that of the other states has decreased they have taken a jump other states have been decreased over here understand so uh, with this we are going to come to a end of boltzmann mission okay hope that uh, you have understood about the boltzmann mission over here so let me see about the next topic which is going to be called as bidirectional associative memory bidirectional associative memory so we are going to think we are going to discuss about the architecture of this and we are going to see what and all the actual memory is going to be associated with this so in general a bidirectional associative memory is going to be shortly called as bam we are going to call it as an bam simply we are going to call it as bam okay abbreviated as bam the bidirectional associative memory is a supervised learning model uh, which is going to be dealt in the artificial neural network this is an hetero associative memory for an input pattern it returns another pattern which is potentially of a different size that is the speciality of this bidirectional associative memory so this bidirectional associative memory is going to be a supervised learning model in the artificial neural network and this is an hetero associative memory for a given input this it's going to return an another pattern which is potentially of a different size so this phenomenon is very similar to of an human brain as how human brains are going to be get work so the human memory is going to be necessarily associative uh it is it it uses a chain of mental associations to recover a lost memory uh, like an association of faces with names in exam question paper uh, questions and answers uh, and uh, if if uh, if you are going to think about uh, a smell of of a flower immediately we are going to recall the memory of how the flower will be how the thing is going to be get present over there so such things are going to be get present that's why i said that this phenomenon is going to be equivalent to that of the human brain so how the human brain is going to be get associates immediately with the particular thing example if you're going to get a smell or a flavor a flavor of an uh, jasmine flower so we are not going to see visually the jasmine flower it's going to be uh, a smell is going to be we are going to inhale the smell so immediately what we are going to think that our brain is going to associate with the image of the jasmine and we we can we can uh, virtually visualize about the uh, jasmine flower how it's going to look in what way it's going to be so we can e we can easily we can sense about that one so such a way our human brain is going to be get associate with the particular phenomenon so that a phenomenon is going to be called as a bidirectional associative memory phenomenon so in such memory associations for one type of object with an another a recurrent uh, neural network rnn so we are going to deal about a one more called as rnn recurrent 
neural network which is going to be need to receive a pattern of one set of neurons as an input signal and generate a related but not the same a different output patterns of another set of particular neurons. Such a thing is going to be get present over there in the recurrent neural network. So, uh, we can see inside of this particular neural the BAM. Tell me why BAM is going to be required? Why BAM is going to be get required? The main objective to introduce such a network model is used to store the hetero associative pattern pairs. Okay. We are going to deal about the hetero associations and auto associations. So, here we are going to deal about the hetero associative pattern pairs. So, this is going to be used to retrieve a pattern which is going to be giving a noisy or incomplete patterns. So, we are going to derive that one that is why we need the BAM. Okay. That is why we need the bidirectional associative memory and this bidirectional associative memory which is going to have bit of limitations. So, it has a two limitations are going to be present over there. The storage capacity of BAM, the first one is going to be called as the storage capacity of the BAM, bidirectional associative memory. The stored number of associations should not be exceeded to the number of neurons in the smaller layer. That is the first limitation. Assume that this is an area, just an assumption. Assume that this is an area which consisting of a neurons are going to get present over there. So, if you are going to see about that, the storage number of associations should not be, should not be exceeds the value of neurons, neurons which is going to be present in the small layer. That is the first limitation. Coming to the second, second one, incorrect convergence, incorrect convergence. Always we are going to look into the closest association which is going to uh, may not be produced by the particular bidirectional association memory. So, that what happened a convergence will be will not be a correct one, it may be an incorrect one. So, always the closest association may not produce about the particular bidirectional associative memories, sometimes it may be mismatch. Okay. So, that is also going to be a problem which is going to be given. So, that is also going to be taken into consideration as a limitation, incorrect convergence. So, this is an limitation about the BAM. Coming to the next one, bidirectional associative memory. What actually the bidirectional associative memory related to artificial neural network? So, the bidirectional associative memory BAM is a two field attractor neural network introduced as a variant of other neural network associated with this memory model, associated with this memory model. Okay and continuous BAMs are going to be present over there, continuous bidirectional associative memories, which also employ additive dynamics in a fashion similar to that of an off-field networks. That is also going to be get present over there, which is going to produce a half-field network, similar to that of a half-field network. So, additive dynamics are also going to be get playing a role over there. And this is a different from hetero associative in nature as we are aware about that this is different from shunting dynamics characteristics of uh, Grossberg adaptive uh, resonant classes of neural states, neural networks. So, this is going to be hetero associative in nature. So, that that is these are the important parameters we have to analyze about the bidirectional associative memory related with the artificial neural network. Let me discuss about the architecture how the architecture is going to be present, the BAM architecture. We now proceed to generate or generalize the idea of associative memory by allowing a pair of neurons, a pair of neurons which is going to be a different vectors are going to be get associated along with that. That is going to be taken as A of k and B of k as we are going to take 
A and B. And we are going to take that one which is going to be carries a value. Okay. What is that value? A of k is nothing but always a subset of B and B of k is always a subset of B to the power of m, B to the power of n and B to the power of m. Such associative memories are going to be called as hetero associatives since they associate vector from one vector space to the another. So, the implications for a neural network is that now instead of having a, sig a single layer of dimension uh, n dimension n as in the awful network. So, always we require two layer L x of our x uh, f of x and f of y of dimensions of n and m neurons which is going to have n neurons and m neurons which is going to be shown as like in the figure okay as you come across over there this is going to be shown like this so this is going to be the pattern which is going to be get di bidirectional data so w is going to be there and w transfers is going to be present bidirectional architecture we will have one more architecture similar that of the type which is going to be given over there here, if you are going to see about that a forward direction and a backward direction, both are going to get present over there. So, it is a forward direction, movement is going to be a forward direction, whereas here the movement is going to be a reverse direction, nothing but backward direction. So, x of p, x of x2 of p, like that, we are going to have a different input layers and output layers have been mentioned over here, and which is going to be providing an output this is going to be in the forward direction whereas here it is going to be in the reverse direction if you can see that this is an input so output layer which is going to produce an input layer from the output end we are going to get the input end backward direction okay such system is going to be called as bidirectional associative memory b a m understand let me see the relaxation procedure relaxation procedure. Consider the forward chain of activity transmission which is going to be from as we assumed that L of x to L of y. As we are aware about that we are going to take about this f of x to f of y value the same data we are going to consider over there for the relaxing, uh, relaxation procedure. Consider your forward chain as we are going to assume over there as A dash of transverse, A dash of transverse weight matrix W which is going to be get initialized or tends to B dash, tends to B dash where the signal vector A dash of L x or F of x is composed with the weight matrix of W, weight matrix of W to set up the activations in the value or in the layer of L of y, L of y, which are then thresholded to generate the signal vectors as B dash, the signal vectors as B dash across the layer L x, across the layer L x. So, assuming that <coughs> A dash is close to an encoded association of the EGN vectors AI, EGN vectors AI, then all or then all other associations are going to be encoded associations of AJ, encoded associations of AJ. It is going to be desired that the uh, vector B dash is going to be generated closer to that of the next EGN vectors of B i. Then any other encoded uh, uh, vectors or encoded associations of B i or B j are going to be being the same vector associated with the value of A i. This is going to be with the value of A i that is going to be very much closer. So, if we wish to uh, feed back the B dash value to the L x, to the L x in order to avoid or in order to improve 
the accuracy of recall we may do so by using the transverse of the weight matrix the transverse of the weight matrix so that is going to be taken into consideration and in this reverse chain of activity transmission from lx to ly as a double dash which is going to tends to the b dash transverse into w dash transverse okay na so remaining we will continue in the next video thank you